This is the 2020 mechanic exam question three. Right, question three. Um, what have we got up here? Joe and Alex need to cross a bridge to reach the, reach their destination. Um, so we got a 30 meter bridge. It's got 3,000 or 30,000 kilograms. It's 30 ton. Um, the supports are 26 meters apart, equal distance from the center of the bridge. Stake two requirements for an object to be in equilibrium. So I mean, the generic go-to answer is they need to have the the torques, the net torques must be balanced or must be equal, um, and the net forces must be balanced. However, the net forces must be balanced only means the forces in the plane. So all the upwards forces need to be need to be equal if you sum them to all the downwards forces and all the horizontal forces need to be equal to the other horizontals. So like all the left forces need to add, add to all the right forces. Um, so it's a little bit a bit of misdemeanor. Um, you can have two vertical forces that are completely different to each other, um, which is a bit, it can be a little bit confusing. So I'll just pause and write it. All right, so I'd say a little more succinctly, net torque equals zero, net force equals zero. All right, um, the, road closed, uh, the road is closed as the bridge is under repair, the support column at end B can supply a maximum for our support force of 160,000 newtons. By finding the torques around about support A, calculate the furthest distance from support A that a 1,600 kilogram mass could be placed before the support at B became overloaded. Um, so, so we're going to find the torques around support A. So we'll flick it over. Here's support A. So we'll draw our like force diagram, whatever you call it. So we're going to have the mass of the bridge, FG acting downwards, we're going to have the support force at B, and this is going to be FS. And then we're going to have from support A a mass of 1600 kilograms. I mean, we'll just put it arbitrarily anywhere, but we'll put it I don't know, here somewhere, I suppose. Um, this is going to be, we're going to have a force downwards of FG as well. Um, and this is going to be. This distance here is 13 because it's half of 26, 13. And this distance here from A uh, to here, um, I don't know what we're going to call that. We'll just call that we'll call that A. No, that might be a little confusing. If we call it X because it's horizontally and it's positively to the, positively to the right, um, it's a bit generic, but whatever. So we're going to draw up our equation of our balance torques. So the clockwork, so first over here, we need to write um, clockwise torques going to be equal to the anti-clockwise torques. And then we're going to figure out which ones are clockwise. So this, if G is clockwise, this one's clockwise, and this one is anti-clockwise. So these two are going to add together. So we're going to have the, so tor oh, torque is force times distance. So the force of the bridge is 30,000 times 9.8, that's the force, mass times gravity, um, times the distance, which is 13, um, and that is going to be plus, uh, again, the force of that like massive object, 1600 times 9.8 uh, times x, and that is going to be equal to the support supplied by B, um, which is, oh, they've given us a force, so it's going to be 16... Uh, 160,000 I should say, 60,000 times, and it's total distance 26 meters away from B. So you you add the the clockwise torque, so this and this are just added linearly together, and that's going to be equal to the anti-clockwise torque, because um, it's going to make it spin anti-clockwise if somehow it could make it spin. Um, and now all we need to do is literally just solve for X. Um, so I'll make this here a number, and this here a number, I'll just do that off camera. Right, so quickly on my calculator, all this times together equals 3.822 million. Uh, 1600 times 9.8 equals 15,680. And 160,000 times 26 is 4.16 million. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to minus both sides by 3.822 million. Um, and then we'll divide that by, what is that, 15,680. So we're going to have x is equal to... Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna. Yeah, stuff it. I'll do it. Big numbers. Four. Stuff it. We'll pull four point one six times ten to the eight. Times ten to the eight. Oh, I'm just converting my head. 
um, minus 3.822 times 10 to the 8, because I know 8 is a million. Um, and that's going to be divided by 15.68 three decimal places times 10 to the 3. That's going to make things so much easier for writing. Um, all right, I just made a total botch up. I did it once and I came out with 22,000. It's because this is to the 6, and this is to the 6, not to the 8. Because um, it's speed of light's 300,000, what, 300 million meters per second. And that's times 10 to the 8. And that's why I stuffed it up. Anyway, that's 21.556 meters. Um, right, meters and how many SF? Probably two, definitely two, possibly three. I mean, that should really be two, so this should be really 22. Um, but I mean, I'll probably just round it to 21.6 meters. Really, and if you don't properly, they only give it to 2SF. Right. Um, the bridge has an earthquake protection system made of springs before being put in place on the bridge. The springs are tested by being loaded with mass M. When, load with, when loaded with mass M, the springs compressed by distance X. Explain in depth how the size of the mass of the springs needs to change in order to compress the springs a distance two times from the original length. Right. Um, original length, I mean, I'd say double off the top of my head. Uh, I would need to half the size. Um, okay, we'll write that. So we've got the... the F equals negative kx. That's the spring constant formula. We're going to have the same force. So, oh, so size of the mass needs to change in order to compress the distance um, to x from its double from its original length. So essentially, if we want to rearrange for x, um, the k is just to show that this is like. The, the extension is opposite direction to the force. So the, the negative, I should say, um, doesn't really mean anything um, other than tells you the direction. F over K. Um, if we want to have double the... If we're going to have double the extension, and, I mean, we can't really... And the size of the mass on the springs. So the springs aren't changing. Oh, we just need to double the size of the mass. Um, there we go. That's it. So I'll just write it out. All right, there we go. So I said, um, assuming the springs don't change, to double the extension, you must double the force. Thus, force equals mass times gravity. You must double the mass. Just close that G. All right, there we go. Um, last question. Is it last question? Yep. Joe and Alex wonder whether a compressed spring from the bridge could accelerate their car once the spring is released, as in the diagram below. They decide to determine the effect of the spring on the car's motion. They estimate that for this spring... A force of 50,000 newtons would compress the spring's length from what, 6 to 4.2, so that's a compression of 1.8. Um, so we'll just chuck that in here. Delta X is equal to 1.8. The total mass of the car and occupants is 1,600 kilograms. Cap at a maximum speed to which the spring could accelerate the car and its occupants. If it was compressed to 4.2, you should start by first determining the spring constant in K. Cool. So we're going to have spring constant K from, we're just pulling this from over the page, F uh, over X. Um, they reckon 50,000 newtons, they say. So 50,000 um, divided by, and the compression was 6 to 4.2. So that's a compression of 1.8. 1.8 meters. Um, and that is going to equal... So 5e e to the 4 over 1.8. Oosh, what does that equal? 27,000. 27, 000. 27 uh, I mean, that's what I did. 5e e to the 4, because that's 50,000. 27, 777.78 uh, newtons per meter, because it's force over distance. Um, now, what we're going to do is this. What are we going to have? It's compressing, it's getting launched, so we're losing uh, spring potential energy and we're gaining kinetic energy of the car. So we're going to have half, um, or EEP is equal to half, or equal to half K 
x squared. And this is going to all, by well, assuming it's going to all transfer to half mv squared. Um, times both sides by 2, cancels out the, uh, and that's going to be equal to the e kinetic. Um, so that's, we're assuming it's going to lose uh, potential energy and it's going to be given to kinetic energy, or it's going to be a, a change of energy. Um, so we'll times both sides by 2, so we're going to get half, I mean, we're just going to get kx squared equals mv squared, um, and now we're going to divide both sides by mass. So kx squared over mass, that would ordinarily equal v squared, but I'm just going to square it both sides, so I can skip a, skip a step, and that is going to be equal to v, so that is going to be equal to square root, and make it big, uh, 27, 777, just leave it there, times 1.8 squared over... What's the mass? 1600? 1600. Um, and that is going to equal, I'll just chuck it over here, V equals. Right, so we get 7.499999, essentially 7.5 meters per second. Um, and notice here, I just went crazy on the, I didn't round that number at all. Um, there you go. So we have 7.49. Um, 9 meters per second negative 1 and then we'll just check down here v equals 7.5 meters per second uh, negative 1 and this really is v max so um, maximum maximum velocity velocity right what assumptions have you made in this calculation um, well, we assume the spring is completely massless, which is totally not the case. Um, we're assuming that it's like a perfect transfer of energy, which is also probably not the case. Um, and that's really about it. I mean, you just, we've assumed energy is conserved and that the spring is massless. So I'll just quickly pause and write it. Right, so I just said, assumed all energy is transferred from the spring to the car and that the spring is massless.